All right, I think I'm live. It's always it's always a crapshoot when I get started, and um, it said like it there's a delay before it says live up in the up in on my screen. But then when I watch the recording, it's like I had gone live before when I was just clicking around, and it's embarrassing. So anyway, so I think that I'm live. Hello, I'm Margie Rummers Davis, and uh, welcome to our free live stream that we do. No, of course the live stream is free. It is the live is the live stream we do every week in our free Facebook group uh, called the QBO Gym Locker Room. So uh, if you are watching this live, that means that you are already. Um, it means that you are already in the locker room. So this little intro is just for the people who watch the recording on YouTube. Join us. There's a link below to join us so you can interact and you can vote on my hair. Um, um, the uh, let me just I just got distracted because Patricia asked a question. Let me just put this up. Um, Actually, no, Patricia, I'm going to answer your question later when I get to talking more about that. Let me finish the intro. So, the, anyway, so our, the QBO Gym Locker Room is your, your spot. It's the number one spot on the entire internet for hands-on practice using QuickBooks Online. All right. So inside the locker room, when you join the locker room, you automatically get a free getting started course. And the getting started course covers how to get your free QuickBooks Online accountant account, which is different than regular account or regular QBO accounts. Um, uh, terminology, how to navigate it, uh, best practice workflows, how to access the sample company, which is where we do the majority of our exercises. And uh, you also get some exercises to actually do and play around with uh, your new QBOA account, okay? So that's the getting started course. Then, as a member of the locker room, you also have access to over 100 free exercises. And people are always asking me, where do I find them? Hopefully you guys all got the email or the newsletter that went out this morning because I answered a lot of these questions that we tend to get over and over. And one of them is where are the exercises? Okay, so the exercises are pinned in the featured section of the group. Okay, so you can either click featured at the top here. If you're on your phone, you might have to click the hamburger icon, which is up in the upper left-hand corner, but you're looking for this post, this welcome post um, that is pinned, and then in there is the link to the 100 free exercises that you can work on to get hands-on practice using QuickBooks Online. That is what we do here. We are all about hands-on practice. Okay, so, um, in addition to the free exercises, that free, that big list of free exercises, we you also get a free exercise of the week, which is what we go through, we walk through here on our weekly live stream, 11 a.m. Eastern time every Friday. So um, the exercise of the week is actually part of a paid program that we have called the QBO Gym. The QBO Gym is uh, like a, a flight simulator. That's what Joel is going to put in the chat here in just a second. It's like a flight simulator for bookkeepers. Like it, it, it gives you the opportunity to actually be a bookkeeper. This is one of the things. The reason we created the, the QBO Gym is because we heard over and over, oh, I passed the test. I got my certification, but I don't actually know what I'm doing. And, um, and so, and I see all these people like, how can I learn how to actually be a bookkeeper? How can I like volunteer? Can I volunteer for somebody? Can I, you know, uh, can I shadow you? Can I, you know, will you give me some of your clients? You know, like what I see this all the time. And so that's why we created the QBO gym, which it gives you the experience. You get an entire year's worth of transactions and stuff to do, um, it's broken up into months. It's broken up into like these four different sections. 
Um, the warm-ups are all the things that you do when you very first walk in. So when you walk in uh, to start working on a client, and obviously if we're working online, we're not actually walking in, but when you start working on a client um, and you, uh, you start, you process the money that came in, you process the money came out, you process bank feeds, then you work on the things that Craig has asked you to do, maybe sending invoices, paying, uh, recording bills, recording deposits. Um, and then every month there is a focus um, uh, where you would do a deep dive on a particular feature, all related, this is all an AI simulation that's all related to something that's happening in, uh, in Craig's business. So one of the questions I get a lot is what's the difference between the free exercises and the gym exercises? And the key difference is the experience. So the, the free exercises are just learn this feature and do this exercise. Whereas the gym is, it's all in context of an experience of like what is happening in Craig's business. You're also going to reconcile accounts and run reports and you're gonna do that for an entire year, okay? So that's the QBO Gym. Everything that you do in the QBO Gym is tied to your Books Match account. And I forgot to open somebody up here. Um, your Books Match account actually tracks what you've been working on and verifies that you have earned these skills, okay? So we divide them up into 10 different skill groups, which you can see here, sales, customer management, inventory management, etc. You can drill down and see more specifically like the skills that you have verified. You can compare yourself to how you're doing compared to everybody else in the pool. And then um, we take all of the information, we take your activity, and we track three important metrics. The first one is knowledge. Knowledge is the breadth of information that you have been practicing and learning about, okay? So that's kind of like the wide uh, breadth of, of what you've been studying. Um, the consistency is how frequently you are upskilling. So the, uh, the consistency, so I just lost my train of thought. I, I do this every week. You would think that I would be able to just rattle this off. So I failed to mention that, um, uh, oh, Joel, we need the, not the, not the uh, challenge, but the regular link in the chat. Anyway, so we track all of this information and you have the opportunity to open up your profile and open it up to recruiters and people who are looking to staff accounting companies and small businesses who need and need a bookkeeper. And by doing this, by tracking everything that you are doing, we are actually far, far superior than say, just putting your information on a resume because nobody knows you know, what you put on a resume is just what you wrote about yourself. And taking a test just means that you uh, can pass a test. And saying that you have X number of years of experience just means that you uh, are old, right? <laughs> so it doesn't mean that you're any good. So we're actually tracking all of the work that you're doing in QuickBooks Online. And if you want, you can open this up and get leads from and we are actively, we are actively working on um, getting people. <clears throat> excuse me. We're actively working on raising your profile and having people actually look at you. So, in as we were developing Books Match, one of the things that uh, one of the recruiters told us is that her biggest frustration was reaching out to people who uh, said that they wanted work, but then when she actually contacted them, they said, oh no, actually, I'm not looking anymore, I found something or whatever. So she actually wanted us to put in like a, a weekly ticker where you had to go in and um, where you actually have to go in and say that every week that you're still working, that you're still open to work. And we said, you know, 
even better, why don't we have them do an exercise every week so that they're actually upskilling. They're not just saying they're still open for work, but they're actually upskilling. So, um, so that's why we have this consistency metric. And we thought that once a week was a little bit too high of a standard to hold you to, so that's why we do within 14 days. Then, um, then we also, the third metric that we are tracking is speed. Now this is, the speed is not how quickly you can go through an exercise, but it's how many skills that you are gaining in a particular week. And there's a very important reason why we are tracking speed. And that is because we don't want to penalize you for being new. Okay, so if you're brand new, your comparison in the knowledge metric, somebody else, somebody who has been around for a really long time, their knowledge is going to be high and your knowledge is going to be low. And we don't want to penalize you for that. Like we want, we still want to recognize you. So if you are uh, actively working and your speed metric is high, that means you're kicking butt and you're going to get recognized for that. So we take these three metrics, uh, knowledge, consistency, and speed, we mush them all together in a uh, highly calculated, fancy way and uh, give you a rank. And here Billy is uh, marked as exceptional talent this uh, today. This changes as you guys are always working on it. And, um, and then the people who are re the recruiters can what they do is they see they they use something called a talent finder and because these people have turned they've turned on their little thing that says they're open to work and um, and so the people who are marked exceptional talent um, are listed here you can see this uh, person Donna let's see has an average speed but she's still marked as top talent and that the reason is because she has maxed out her knowledge, you know, her knowledge is really high, that means the available things that she's gonna be able to do to knock up the speed is small, so, but we still give her, like we still recognize her as a top talent, and rising talent is the opposite, it's for the new people who might have a lower knowledge base, but are kicking butt and being high. So you can see that, um, all of the work that you do now in order to keep um, in order to keep your consistency high as I mentioned you want to be able to you want to be doing an exercise at least every other week um, and that's and and if somebody has gone through all of the exercises then there won't be anything for them to do and that's why sorry about that guys <laughs> that's specifically why we have an exercise a week now, before we go into this week's exercise, we are, um, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that I saw popping up in the chat. Okay, so where was Patricia's? Uh, Patricia asked, um, nope, that's wrong. Nope, that's wrong. Where did Patricia go? There we go, this one. There we go. Uh, Patricia says, if we have questions pertaining to different month exercise we are working on in the gym, when or where would be the best place to ask? Every exercise has a little feedback uh, link down at the bottom that you can, uh, you can ask a question about or you can, if you notice, we, I'll tell you the reason why we have it there is we specifically have it there because QBO changes all of the time and you're going to know it before we do. So the um, so we have the feedback so you can give us a heads up that oh they changed the wording they changed the the picture they changed the you know whatever and so we can go in and uh, and update it. I will tell you that we are currently we are in the process of revamping all all of the exercises and we are up to August. Um, and so we've gotten a couple of support tickets about September and October that like that some interfaces are different, um, like the chart of accounts has changed a little bit. And so we're like, eh, I know we're going to get, we're getting there. So we should have in the next few weeks, definitely before the end of the summer, we'll have the whole rest of the year built out. So those will be uh, all updated. So one, one area is uh, the feedback. 
If it's a more urgent, because the, the feedback on the exercise, I will tell you right now, it doesn't go in a black hole, it goes in a bit of a brown hole right, <laughs> right now, uh, because like we know that these exercises need to be updated. If it's not a relate, if your question is not related to the exercise needing to be updated or not matching what you're seeing on the screen, then uh, you can just reach out to support at fastandeasyqbo.com and we'll get that question answered. Okay, now there's like Patricia. Then I saw some other, let's see. Once, okay, so Tracy is asking, once we finish the year, can we go back and start over and do it multiple times? So once you finish year one, uh, year two will be unlocked. And year two is uh, the same as year one, except it's, in, uh, it's more challenging. And it's more challenging in two ways. One is um, that it is, so with, with, uh, with year one, the exercises are step-by-step, step, do this, now do this, now do this, now do this. Okay, if you, if you guys are, have all done our exercises, you know that they're like very, very step-by-step, step, okay? In year two, we take away those individual steps. So instead of in year one, for example, we might, it might say uh, create an invoice, uh, click plus new, select invoice, enter the customer, you know, all like each of those steps. Whereas in year two, it's going to just say create an invoice and that's it. You're going to have to know how to do that. <laughs> Um, year two also includes, because we're not giving you step-by-steps, we also have checkpoints so that you uh, can check to make sure that you're actually doing it correctly. Um, and then the other thing that year two introduces um, is AI Craig, so, or Craig Bot that we call, we, we alternate what we call him, but basically it introduces a fictional, a conversation with your fictional business owner via chat. So, um, so whereas exercise one, it in year in year one, it might say um, you had a question for Craig, so you asked him, and he said, "Here's the answer," and then that's what you do. Whereas in year two, you're actually asking Craig the question. You actually ask him for bank statements, you ask him clarifying questions, and, um, and he responds. So that's what happens year one, year two. If you get through all of year one and all of year two, that's why we have the exercise of the week, <laughs> so you can keep uh, practicing your skills. But yes, you can go back at any time to any exercises that you want just by um, selecting, let me show you, let me show you my screen again. Uh, so inside the gym, selecting choose your workout, you can go and select, you can go to any of these uh, individual rather than, if you're just going through the gym, it's just gonna lead you one by one by one by one. But you can at any time go up to choose your workout and do them in any order. If there's like a thing that you want to learn in, you know, particularly like, oh my gosh, uh, projects, okay, is I know that my client needs projects and so I gotta learn all about it. Here's, you know, you could just skip to March and do that or go back and do it. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, Tracy, da, da, da. all right. Patricia had the same question. Lillian said, is there a second year available when you have completed year one? Yes, as I just said. Okay, um, then let's see. Patricia says, with being a part of the gym, will we always have access to past years? If we are on year two, can we still have access to year one? Yes. So um, year two is actually a different course. And by the way, we're gonna get to, we are actually, even though we're half an hour in, we are actually going to actually do some exercises today. Um, but the, um, the uh, I don't know what I was trying to say, that they are actually separate courses. So year one, when you finish year one, it unlocks year two, which is a separate course. So yes, you can always go back and forth. 
Um, and then the exercise of the week is also a separate course. And um, it unlocks once you have 250 points in the gym. The reason that uh, it doesn't, un the reason, the reason you have to unlock it, the reason we don't just give it to you right away is because you don't need it. Like <laughs> the whole purpose of the ex the reason we have the exercise of the week is for when you run out of exercises. When you run out of exercises, that's when you do, you need an exercise a week to keep your consistency metric high. Um, and, but so many, like we started it and so many people were like, I want it, I want it, I want it. So that's why we, um, we, we are like, okay, well, we'll give it to you after 250 points. So by the way, if you're new, um, the gym is all gamified. So as you go through it, you earn points and you can open up, you have, you have a little drawer down here. It tells you like how many points you've earned. And um, in the gym, like in, uh, the points are in all of our course, courses and all of our courses, they're like just for fun because it makes a little noise, ding, you know, woohoo. And there's like celebrations, and, like all this, all fun game, gamified stuff. But in the gym and the cleanup course, they, uh, it actually unlocks different things. So uh, it unlocks, at 250 points, it unlocks the uh, exercise of the week. All right, let's see. Um, Darla, in case you missed it, left an amazing testimonial on our page earlier today. Um, and uh, she said, uh, so <laughs> she said, like I said, this is a gold mine and worth the membership just to have access to this library of exercises. Thank you. It's funny that you would use the phrase gold mine because if you guys read the newsletter this morning, like that's what I, that was the theme, was like mining for gold in the QBO gym locker room. <laughs> so anyway, but what she's talking about here is the, um, the gym. Okay, let's see. Uh, is this for people that pay the $67 subscription? So the QBO gym, yes, is a subscription product. It is, I always, oh gosh, what did I do? I hate, I, I hate to say pricing because prices always change. There's discounts and, you know, and all this stuff. The regular retail price is $79 a month. You can get an annual uh, membership and reduce that price. Also, if you do the gym challenge, which is kind of like a, a five day try before you buy situation, um, then you also have an opportunity to get a discounted version of both the monthly and the annual membership uh, at the same time. Um, and um, we do, so let me go back to other questions here. Da, 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 da. Is this for people? Okay, so Darla or Laura asked, uh, well, she asked Darla, do you think it's helpful to get clients? We're going to talk about, like, I've already talked about how you can open up your profile to, uh, to get clients, but we're also going to talk about a feature of the gym later, which is marketing prompts. Somebody posted in the group, which is, the group is not for marketing your business, uh, and we did have somebody post earlier, how do you create content? And the, and in the gym, we give you content, we give you content for your social media posts. We're going to get to that after, at the end, after we do the actual exercise. Okay, let's see. Uh, Tracy said is 250, 250 points is during year one. It's after like two months after and two, not two real time months, but two months worth of work is about 250 points. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. So many questions. I love questions. I love that you're here. I love that you're, that I have an opportunity to talk to you guys and answer questions and all that. I love it. But we also need to get cracking and actually do some actual exercises because that is the point of, that is why we're here. Okay. So let me uh, share my screen. Okay, and we are going to get started. And we're going to do our exercise of the week. As I mentioned, this is a separate course that's unlocked after 250 points. Um, if, you don't have an, uh, if you don't have a membership to the gym, 
that's fine because that's why we do this weekly live stream. So you can, this is like, a, you're a benefit of being in the locker room is you get these exercises without having to pay your, uh, without having to pay the subscription. So Joel has posted in the chat the link that we're gonna be walking through today. Um, if you are not in the gym, you can use that link, no problem. If you are in the gym, you wanna make sure and use the link that's in the course, because that's the only way you get Booksmatch credit for it, okay? So using the link that Joel provides is not gonna give you the Booksmatch credit. So here is um, our exercise this week. We're going to talk about recurring transactions. So I'm gonna just click that link and we are going to walk through this exercise. Um, here is our scenario. Your client Craig asked you to help him set up a recurring expense. We're gonna see below for more details about this. Um, this particular exercise is, uh, this is a pro advisor challenge, which means that it comes actually from Intuit and is part of the free training that's inside your QBOA account. If you wanna to get to it, you wanna to go to your QBOA account. Again, the accountant account, QBO accountant, is different than the regular account that uh, normal people get. So it is, um, uh, it is a special account that allows you to connect to other people's accounts so that you can do their books. You can tell that you're in, a, in an accountant account because it says accountant up here um, on the screen because the left navigation bar here is gray and also because it's divided up into two sections, the your practice and your books down here at the bottom. Okay, so that's how you know you're in QBO accountant. So um, the uh, those of you who are live, I'm sure you already have this and already know that, um, if you're watching the recording on YouTube, then the link will be uh, down below, okay? All right, so uh, here we are, and we're gonna go to the Pro Advisor. On the left-hand navigation bar, we're gonna go from Pro Advisor to Training. By the way, I told you guys earlier that we are in the middle of a storm. <laughs> So, and I am hearing, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it is raging. It is raging out there. So I'm just crossing my fingers that we don't lose power or internet <laughs> or internet during this call. So, um, all right, so here I am inside the Pro Advisor. So I went from Pro Advisor to training. Here is where you'll find all of the uh, free training for Pro Advisor training that Intuit provides. Um, the personalized path, if you, you can answer some questions and they'll give you the training that is specific to what you want to learn about. Um, the certification hub is where you actually go to take the certification tests, if that's something you're interested in. And the training library is where all of the training is for, um, where all of the training is that they provide for free. So we're going to click training library. And then uh, you'll notice, okay, so it says here product training, and there's actually multiple products that they train on, but you often can't see it because it, the QuickBooks Online one is open. So if I click this, it will uh, condense it or collapse it. So you can see there's QuickBooks Online, payments, payroll, and then there's additional training here, just tons of training that you might not even know about. Okay, but what we're focusing on is the QuickBooks Online. Okay, so here's QuickBooks Online, and you'll notice that their training is divided into these different uh, tiles. Okay, so each of these tiles, and so I'm gonna go back to my exercise. Okay, so this just kind of tells you where to do it, and what we're gonna be talking about is on the banking tile. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to here, I'm gonna select banking. And then you'll notice that uh, there are three different sections. There's a beginner skills, intermediate, and advanced, okay? Um, not all of them have all three. Some of them just have beginner and intermediate. Some just have intermediate and advanced. 
This one has all three, and I don't know how they decide what's in what group, but the ones that are um, intermediate, these are the ones that are, um, these are the ones that are uh, uh, going to be on your basic level certification test. So if I hover my mouse over that little icon, it says tested in the QuickBooks Online exam. That's the basic level exam. Um, the ones that are uh, advanced, this, if I hover, notice it says tested in the advanced QuickBooks Online exam, okay? So the one that we are working with today is under intermediate skills. And what we're looking for here is creating and using recurring transactions. Did I mention that's what we're doing today? That's what we're doing today, recurring transactions. Oh yeah, because I, I already read the scenario from the exercise. Okay, I remember now. Okay, all right. So here is the, inter the, the Intuit training. And uh, you can see over on the right hand side, there is a link. Sometimes this link works, sometimes it doesn't. Today it doesn't. So we'll, let's see why. As you go through the training, sometimes there are just like things that you have to do before, okay, here. So this one, you can't continue. See how it's grayed out here? You can't continue unless you actually click on each tab. Once you click on each of these tabs, it's no longer grayed out and you can keep going. Also, sometimes there is a knowledge check, which I always think is crazy that they give you a knowledge check before they actually help you practice it. But anyway, here, go, 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 go. Okay, so here's a knowledge check. <clears throat> we haven't even talked about tra recurring transactions yet. We haven't done the exercise, but we have to, in order to get to the exercise, we have to have read through all of that stuff. If you're not a good reader like me, I, I, it's not that I'm not a good, re like, I'm, 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 it's, I'm not dyslexic, uh, dyslexic. I don't have a learning disability. Like, I can read just fine. But I don't learn from reading. I don't learn from reading very well, which is why um, this whole company exists. This is why Fast and Easy QBO, because I learn by doing. And if you also learn by doing, then you're in the right place. So anyway, so you have to read through all of that stuff. And then uh, you have this little knowledge check. Let's read it together, see if we can get through it. All right, a client wants to set up a monthly customer charge for a customer, okay? The charge is a fixed fee with a payment due by the last Friday of the month. <clears throat> which one of these options would be the best way for a client to receive this? Okay, so we haven't even yet talked about recurring transactions. We're gonna do that as we go through the exercise. And as we go through the exercise, we are going to see how uh, there are three different types of uh, recurring transactions. And, um, <laughs> okay, well, oh, I lied, I lied, I lied. Okay, I lied, forget that, forget that. Well, that's what we're talking, we're not talking about three different types of recurring transactions. We're talking, in this question, we are talking about the financial transactions, whether it should be a recurring purchase order, a recurring invoice, or a recurring expense. Obviously, it's not gonna be a bank rule. We talked about bank rules a couple weeks ago, we're not gonna do bank rule because this whole lesson is on recurring transactions. So do we want a purchase order, an invoice, or an expense, okay? This is a client wants to set up a monthly customer charge for a customer. The charge is a fixed fee with payment due by the last Friday of the month. That sounds like an invoice to me. So let's see, check answer, woohoo! It's always embarrassing when I don't get those right, so. All right, so here is our pro advisor challenge, finally. Okay, so we've got to, got to the final, the, the pro advisor challenge, okay? And um, here is, you open this up. Here is the, um, the task, which is what we call the scenario. And I will give you a heads up that they have a typo in theirs. <laughs> so 
There's, it says, your client Craig asked you to help him set up a recurring insurance expense, but then none of the scenario is insurance. It's actually a rent payment. So, uh, so yeah, so we made that correction in our version of the exercise. They said, uh, they tell you like how to check uh, if it's correct at the end, and then they tell you the step-by-step -step afterwards. So I guess that's why it's called the Pro Advisor Challenge because they want you to challenge yourself. And then they give you some tips like on what common things you might do wrong. All right, so that is the Intuit version. We like our version better. Uh, and so we take the Pro Advisor Challenge and we turn it into our signature style. We are doing this just until we get through all of the, um, all, until we get through all of the Pro Advisor Challenges. There are six or seven uh, left after today. So we're gonna be done before, um, we're gonna be done before too long. Okay, all right, so uh, let's go back to the exercise. Okay, this, what I just described, is all of this part. Now to do this exercise, we need to be in the sample company. So I'm going to go here, I'm gonna click the gear icon. Forever and ever, this has been called the gear icon, but recently Intuit started calling it the settings cog. So use both of those terms, I guess. Know what settings cog means. We've always called it the gear icon, but I'm gonna click that. Then I'm gonna click sample company. It's going to log me out of my QBOA account, okay? This is very important if you are studying for the certification test, okay? If you're studying for the certification test, it is open book and you can use the sample company, but if you load the sample company while you're taking the test, you'll get logged out of your test, so don't do that. If you take any of our courses, we will teach you how to have them open at the same time, uh, but just like, please, please don't, don't don't shoot yourself in the foot and you know like yeah so you get logged out when you load the sample company okay all right so here I am I have loaded the sample company and I'm gonna go back to my uh, I'm gonna go back to my exercise so I've loaded the sample company here's my big notice ah don't get logged you know you're gonna get logged out okay here is that more details of the exercise here. Notice I put in this, Intuit has insurance listed here, but that's a typo. It's actually a monthly rent payment. Okay, now here's all the stuff that we need to know. Craig has a new landlord, okay? He has arranged to rent some warehouse space from EDD and will pay the rent on the first of the month. His monthly rent for the space is $500 and he'll pay it from his checking account. Okay, here's what you need to do. We're gonna set up a monthly rent payment and uh, we're gonna configure the transaction to happen on the first of each month, starting next month, and we're gonna name it EDD Warehouse Space Monthly Rent. Okay, all right, you got all that? Now, here is where we're gonna actually do the exercise. You'll notice that I have a little button here that says Guide Me. The reason I see that button is because I have, I am using Google Chrome and I have an extension um, loaded called, this one right here, called Scribe AI Documentation. Okay, so if you, that's how we create our exercises, is using Scribe. And um, so you're going to, uh, if, if you load that extension, then when you're in the exercise, you'll have that little guide me link. You have to open the sample company first, but then you'll have this little guide me link. And when you do that, it'll have the sample company and the exercise side by side so you can follow through, okay? All right, oh, look what happened to that. That's interesting. I don't know what that's about. I wonder if I lost do we lose our formatting on all of them? Wow. All right, it's all good. It's all good, we can still read it. Can you read, oh, there, it corrected itself. That's weird. Okay, 
So here's what we're going to do. Uh, and we're going to create the recurring transaction. Now there's a couple of ways to create recurring transactions. Um, this is just one of them. <laughs> Tracy, you go to your ex manage extensions right here in Google Chrome. You go to Google right extensions right here. You click it. You manage extensions, you add this extension called Scribe, and then you do your exercise, and that's how you do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> she, she says, sorry, forgot caps were on. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we are doing it. We're doing it, guys. Okay. Here is the exercise. We're, we're creating the recurring transactions, lots of places you can do it from. This exercise guides us by using the gear icon or the settings cog. Okay, so we're gonna click the gear icon right here. We're gonna go to account and settings. Oh no, I'm not going to recount. I think, duh, I'm going to recurring transactions. Duh. Okay, I'm going to recurring transactions right here. Okay, let's click recurring transactions. Okay, so there are two recurring transactions set up already in the system. We're going to ignore those because we're creating a new one. So we're going to click new right here. And then the first thing that you have to do is you have to decide what type of transaction you are creating. So this is a monthly rent payment, which means it's going to be an expense. Okay, so this is going to be every month on what did we say the first of first Friday or whatever it was. This is uh, going to show up. Now here's something I'm going to take my this off because those of you who know, have been around for a while, you know that when I turn off my screen share, that's when I get serious. Okay, this is really important, really important. Okay, when you are setting up a recurring expense. That does not mean you are actually paying the thing. Okay, so we're going to set up this rent payment, but we're not setting up the actual paying of it. We're recording the, we're recording, or we're putting in QBO the record of it. So the record of it happening and the actual doing of the thing are two very different things, okay? And it's super important that you have that clear in your mind. Um, the paying of the rent, I don't know how it's gonna happen. There's lots of ways, maybe we're sending a check, maybe we are going on to the uh, payment, uh, maybe we're going on their website and there we're clicking some buttons. Maybe they have our credit card already and so they're just charging our credit card every time. I don't know how it's actually happening. But the um, uh, but it doesn't but what we're doing is we're putting the record of it happening. okay? So very, two very different things. And Uya just asked a really good question. Um, why do you use an expense rather than a bill for the rent? okay? So, a, the difference between an expense and a bill is expense is a record of payment at the time of service. It is, I'm paying it, it's due right now, I'm paying it right now, okay? A bill means it's delayed, okay? So it's, you can get a, a bill uh, and not have to pay it, like a utility bill, your phone bill or whatever, you get that and you have, whatever, 30 days to pay pay whatever, okay? So when there's terms, that's a bill, you don't have to pay it. A bill is a two-step process. So there is the bill portion of it, and then there is the payment portion of it, okay? So it's a two-step process. When you are, uh, I mean, you could set up a recurring bill, but then you would also have to set up the recurring payment because you have the bill and the payment, it's, a two, it's two steps. And so it will save you time if you're just always, if, you, if you're just always paying that thing, then you, uh, 
are gonna, it's, it makes more sense for it to be an expense. If the amount changes, um, then it would be good to have a recurring bill and then that way you can just go in and edit the correct amount every month. We'll talk about like some ways to use that in just a minute, but, um, but yeah, that's why. That's why, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, so going back to my very important point. <laughs> my very important point is that we are not paying this right now. We are recording the payment of it, okay? So I don't, I just, I, I lie in bed awake at night worrying that some of my students are gonna set this up and think that the bill is getting paid just by putting it in QBO. That's not what happens, okay? So you go in, you do the thing, it's gonna be like an automatic charge on your bank, on your you know card or however that's gonna get paid automatically. Now we're putting in the record of that payment that's happening automatically. Okay, all right, back to work, back to work, off soapbox. Okay, so this is going to be an expense. Okay. We're gonna click okay. All right, now we need to fill out all the information related to the recurring expense, okay? So the first thing we enter is the template name. In this case, we are calling it uh, EDD Warehouse Space Monthly. Ray Ray, I, is it Ray Ray or Riri? Sorry, I will answer that question in just one sec because uh, that's an important question. Okay, now, okay, let's see. In our exercise, it says, confirm the type field says scheduled. We don't need this expense paid in advance, so leave that box blank, okay? So here is, there are three, this is what I was trying to say earlier, and I got ahead of myself. There are three different types of recurring transactions. One is scheduled. The other is, why can't I click it? Scheduled. Then there is reminder. And then there is unscheduled. Okay. So scheduled means that it will automatically show up in your books without you doing anything. Okay. It will automatically show up in your books. And you can have it automatically show up in your books uh, days in advance if you want or just on the date that it's scheduled. I personally, this is my personal preference, I like to have things in advance because, and in my own personal expenses, I always have things for 14, I wanna know for the next 14 days what is coming up because then I know how, like that's my way of budgeting. Like I, then I know how much money I'm gonna have. So if I know that my telephone bill, which is a ridiculous amount of money, if I know my telephone bill is due in two days, I would like to see that on my register so that I know that that money, it, like that I don't have as much money as I think I do or that I have to reserve that amount of money in my account. So I always, me personally, I always like to have it days in advance. The, um, this exercise doesn't have us do days in advance. Okay, the other one is a reminder. So this Riri, or Ray Ray, let me know which one's correct. Um, the, this is what you would want to do if you need a reminder, if the payment is not automatically happening, then, so for example, if the whatever company doesn't automatically, doesn't have your credit card and isn't charging it automatically, um, or if you don't have like your bank set up to automatically send off the thing, then, um, then you might wanna have a reminder instead. I will show you later where the reminders show up because it's not, at all obvious. <laughs> so, um, so that's, you could have it automatically put, so scheduled means it automatically shows up in the books 
and you don't ever do anything, it's just there. And the advantage of that, by the way, in case anybody was thinking this, the advantage of it is the bank feed. So if you have it automatically scheduled, you know that it's already happening, it goes in the books without you ever doing it, then when the bank feed record comes, boom, there's something to match to. If you don't know about bank feed matching, that's what we spent the last two weeks working on. So, um, the, so you want it to have the bank, uh, that way the bank will match to it automatically. Now, uh, okay, the, um, all right, I see some questions coming in. I will address that uh, a little bit later. Um, let me get back to, okay, so scheduled, it automatically shows up. Reminder means that it will pop up. There's like a little reminder that you can see, oh, I need to do this, okay? And then you can just cr create, the in create it at the time. Unscheduled means that it's, it doesn't ever show up on your books unless you specifically select it. Why would you ever wanna do that? Well, because sometimes you have uh, things that you order. Let's say Amy's Bird Sanctuary orders bird seed. And um, whenever she orders it, it's always you know, the same, it's always the same amount. She orders it in, you know, in bulk. She orders like bags or whatever of the bird seed. It's always from the same place. It's always the same amount, right? Um, but when she orders it, entirely depends on how many birds she has in the bird sanctuary at any given time. So she might save that expense just as unscheduled and then when the time comes for her to actually do it, then she just pulls it up and boom, there it is. Okay, so unscheduled ones are actually very handy. All three of these are super handy. Okay, so that's the type. In this exercise, we are doing scheduled and we are not doing days in advance. Let me... Um, Uh, let me go back to some of these questions here. Okay, so Riri asked, did I, what am I, what am I doing? Okay, is there a reminder to pay the expense once set up? Hopefully that was answered. You could set it up as a reminder or you could set it up as scheduled. Okay. Um, okay. Jenny says, what is the advantage of putting in the recurring expense versus simply recording the expense when it comes through the bank, bank feed? Does it help with reporting? The advantage of recurring transactions are that you don't have to do it over and over and over. When you do it from the bank feed, you have to like click it. You have to like select the category. You have to select the person. You have to like, you know, do it every time. If you set it up as a recurring transaction, then it's always there and it just matches. You go match. The other the question I thought you were going to ask was why would you do why would you do an ex, a recurring expense versus a bank rule? Okay, and the answer it, the re, the answer is that you have far more control with an expense with a bank rule. Um, and you, the bank, the bank rules are more flexible in that you can have, you know, say for example, if um, if a purchase uh, from Amazon is less than fifty dollars, we always know that it's office supplies. Okay, so like you could set up a bank rule, and a recurring transaction doesn't have that flexibility of like less than. Like the thing about a recurring transaction is that it is a, the, a fixed amount, it's the same amount. Unless it's unscheduled and you are changing it like when you save it, like when you save it, okay? So that's the advantage. So you have to think about, you have to think about the transactions and how, how uh, similar are they going to be how, like, how much exact information do you know? If you know the exact information, use a recurring transaction. 
If you only know like the gist of the information, use a bank rule. I mean, you can use a bank rule for some exact things too, um, but bank rules, I don't know, there's pros and cons to both. All right, I don't wanna muddy the waters too much. Okay, Darla asked, do expenses show up on the AP aging report? They do not because AP is for accounts payable, which is bills. So that is when they are, you, you, uh, it, when you incur the fee, you incur the, the cost today, but you don't have to pay it for uh, 30 days, okay? Then in accrual accounting, when you incurred it, it's as if you paid it, right? But in cash, so that would show up on the AP report. Like if you hadn't, if you hadn't paid it yet, you still incurred it, so that's gonna show up on the report. In cash accounting, um, it's not gonna, there, there's no like, in cash accounting, it doesn't, you, you, it's only recorded when you actually pay it, so like 30 days from now, okay? So expenses, no, not on the AG report, our AP aging only bills, okay? And then Scott asked a really good question. Do the days in advance affect the month the expense it is posted to? And the answer is no, because it is uh, forward dated. So it'll show up on, it'll, the expense itself will have the date of the, and I'm pointing to my screen as if you can see it here. <laughs> the, the, the date of the expense, the date that it is actually posted, that's the date that it will, um, that will show up on the reports, but it will show up in advance. It will show up, uh, it'll, the date on it will be the date, a date in the future if you're using the advance thing. Great questions, guys, great questions. All right, let's get back to the exercise. If I see any more hot pop up, I will answer them. Okay, so. Uh, so that was days in advance. That was the different uh, types. Okay, so now we're just going to put in all of the information. We're going to say he paid EDD, which, oh, that's already a vendor in there. How did that happen? I didn't realize that was a vendor. I thought I knew all the vendors in <laughs> the sample company. Okay, uh, confirm that the field says checking which is right here. Yep, because we said in this scenario, he's paying it from checking. So he's got an ACH thing going on, I guess, or debit card. Um, okay, so the leave the interval uh, as is, okay? So the interval is where you decide how often is it going to recur, okay? So in our scenario, and I'm gonna have to go back and see our scenario said, uh, okay, we'll pay the rent on the first of every month, okay? So we want this to be, interval is monthly, and which day is the first, so the first of every month. So we could say the first Tuesday of the month or like whatever, the first Friday, but in this case, it's the first of every month. This is the most common, which is why it's the default. Okay, and then what day do we want it to start? Now I have to go back to my exercise. Okay, here we go. So this is already correct. All right, and then select the first day of next month. So today is July, so we want it to be August 1st. If I hit month and then hit it again. Nope, that went backwards. H, there we go. I'm trying to do these sh keyboard shortcuts. If you hit M, it'll go to the first of the current month. And then if you hit H, it'll go to the last day of the current month. So that's how I got to July 31st so quickly. And then I thought I could just arrow it over to 
to the, to the 1st of August, but I can't. All right. So there is not a set end date, so this is going to be forever. And the payment method, um, the payment method is important for 1099s. So depending on who this person is that you're paying, um, uh, you may you may have to collect uh, rent, but that's or you may have to report on the rents paid, but we're not going to. That's above our pay grade for this exercise right now. Okay, so the next uh, one is uh, on the first line in the category field, select rent or lease. Okay, so I'm going to go rent, type rent or lease. The amount is $500. Okay. And then I'm going to hit save template. Ah, thank you, Mark. Mark is says it will, if you hit plus, it will increment by one day and minus decreases by a day. So yeah, so I could have put H for the last day of the month and then plus to make it August 1st. Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, so that is the, that's the end of the exercise. But how does that help us? <laughs> how, does that, how does that help us? All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to close this right here and just talk about a couple of other things. All right, so this is, um, so this is automatically scheduled. So unfortunately, even though like these, these, are, these dates are in the past, the recurring transactions don't work in the sample company because it's only, like it's only for a day, okay? But I wanna show you some things. So on this screen, if I click the arrow, then I can use this. So I can, if I don't wanna wait, I can wait until August 1st and it will automatically show up. On August 1st, it'll show up in my books. Boom, done. And then when it actually gets paid at the bank, August 1st, match, boom, done, okay? But let's say, well, we also have to pay something right now. I can hit this down arrow and I can use this, okay? This is how, if, you, if it's an unscheduled transaction that we just set up and it never shows up on the books, now when it's time to use it, that's how you do it, is you click, you do the down arrow and then use. <clears throat> the other thing, notice this, uh, button up here, it says reminder list. If any of these were reminders and I clicked reminder list, it would show me what is coming up that I need to remember to do. Okay, so that can be very handy, is that reminders list there. But also on the, if you go to the uh, dashboard, it will show up as like a little reminder here also. It will say on your dashboard, it's kind of like how you have these, these tasks that show up. It doesn't show up in tasks, it's its own thing. But it, it's like on this screen and it tells you. What kind of sucks is that you're not always on the screen. <laughs> so you have to like, Frequently, like you have to specifically go to the dashboard and see, oh, do I have any reminders? Or go here, go to recurring transactions and pull up your reminder list to see uh, any reminders that you have, okay? Now, there is one other thing. So we're gonna go, so that's the, that's the exercise of the week. I went way into more detail than the actual exercise, I mean, than, Pro, than Intuit did but we're gonna do a different exercise. This exercise that we just did was money out, recording that we had paid somebody, okay? Well, one of the most valuable things that you can learn how to do for your business as a bookkeeper is automatically receive money every month, okay? You never, ever, ever ever, ever, ever send an invoice for your services 
and then wait for the business owner to pay it, okay? Always get paid up front. Always get paid up front. And you can do that with recurring transactions. We're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna do that next. Joel has just put the link in the description, but I have a, a question from Patricia. So I'm gonna go and uh, read this real quick. Okay. Going back to bills versus expense, does paying a bill with the expense window cause any issues? Yes, it does. Is there any special benefit tracking a bill by using the bill window or is it more of a reminder? Um, here is the issue that can come up. Let's say you, um, let's say you got a bunch of bills and you put them all in the system and then it comes time to pay the bills and instead of doing a bill payment, you just write it as an expense. What happens? What happens to the books? Now you have duplicate you have duplicate expense because having the bill out there, that's your liability. Somebody asked, maybe it was you, about the AP aging report. So now you have this life, so your bills are creating a liability out there and now you have an expense, which is creating an expense out there. So that's like double the money that you've lost. And, or you think, it, it seems, it, the, the books reflect that you've lost double the money or you've spent double the money, right? So it's super important that you use, you know, stick to a lane. So if you're gonna record it as an expense, record it as an expense. If you record it as a bill, record it as a bill, but then record the bill payment on top of that. Now, this is a thing, a very similar thing that Corey goes over in the in the cleanup course because like this is a real thing that happens. <laughs> and um, so Corey does go over that in the uh, in the cleanup course. But in developing the cleanup course, we discovered that Intuit now has like a little bit of a stop gap or has a little bit of a uh, they've they've added a little feature. So if you are creating the expense and there is a bill out there for that, uh, for that vendor, it'll give you a pop-up and it'll say, hey, there's a bill out there for this, for this. Do you want to, is this actually a bill payment? Is this actually not an expense that you're right now typing up? <laughs> and if you say, oh yes, actually it is a bill payment, then it'll put them together and it relieves some of that headache. So um, so that's the first answer. Uh, is there any special benefit tracking a bill by using the bill window or is it more of a reminder? I don't quite understand that question. Yes, if you put in, you sh I mean, if you're receiving bills that you don't have to pay for a period of time, you should absolutely put them in so that that liability is on the is on the record. So yeah, so I don't know, I don't quite understand that second half of your question. Okay, Pam says, I think you create a bill if you receive a credit from a vendor. Credits can't be applied. Yes, it didn't finish. Yes, credits cannot be applied to expenses. So that's a good point. I don't know if that's related to Patricia's question, but that is true. That a vendor credit cannot be applied to an expense. It has to be applied to a bill. So if you get a vendor credit, you have to create a bill, apply the vendor credit to it, and then also pay whatever balance. Okay. All right. So yes. Uh, so Patricia, okay, good, good to go. All right, now let's take a look at the other, our second exercise. This is so important, guys. So important, so important. 
Don't send your clients invoices. Don't send them invoices. Then you're chasing the money and not getting paid. Just pay it up front. I mean, get paid up front, get paid up front. The first thing that you have to do is you have to apply for a QuickBooks payment account, okay? It's not hard, don't have to be in business for long, just apply for a QuickBooks payments account. You do that inside your, you do that inside, you click the gear icon and go to account and settings. In, in a QBO accountant account, it says company settings. I don't know why it's different. Um, and then there will be a tab here. It's not a sample company, but there will be a tab here for QuickBooks payments. And you click that and then you fill out the application and then you get QuickBooks payments. And what that does, it, it oh my gosh, it's gonna make your life so much easier. It allows you to charge credit cards. It allows you to charge credit cards or it, you take ACH payments either way, allows you to extract the money um, every month in advance. Okay, so I need to uh, pull up something here real quick so that I can get to the exercise, okay. Now this is one of our free exercises, okay? This is, um, this is not part of the gym. This is one of the free exercises. That's why I included it in the agenda email that I sent out. QuickBooks checking. No, Dustin is asking about QuickBooks checking. QuickBooks, QuickBooks checking is a checking is a checking account um, and um, so no what you want is QB payments all right so here we are so the so what we've done what we did our last exercise was we paid money out now we're going to pay we're going to take money in okay so Craig here's our scenario Craig just signed up on Gita Kalapatapu Kalapadapu, as a new client for weekly gardening. Rather than getting a bill that she has to remember to pay, Gita asked Craig if he could just charge her credit card on the 10th of the month. Now, this is a little bit of a far-fetched scenario because, <laughs> um, because it's not likely that the client is gonna say, can you just charge my credit card? Well, I mean, maybe they could, I've, I've done that. I have said to vendors, can you just charge my credit card? Like, why do I have to do this every month? So yeah, so this is, luckily Craig has already signed up for QuickBooks payments, so he can do this right through QBO. Um, Tracy is asking if this uh, payments has a subscription price. The answer is no, there is a per transaction fee it's very nominal. It's in line with every other merchant out there. So they're not gouging you on that. They may be gouging you in other ways, but they're not gouging you with <laughs> QuickBooks payments. <laughs> so, um, all right, so how are we gonna do this? We're gonna start in the sample company, okay? All right, and I'm gonna click Guide Me because I already have the sample company open. All right, oh, that rain is really coming down. Uh, okay. Uh, Darla is asking, is QB payments the same as ACH payments? QB, QB payments, QuickBooks payments, is a merchant account, which means that you can process credit cards and ACH payments, okay? So, um, so yes. All righty. Um, so here we are, okay, in the payment field. Okay, here we are, here, la, 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 la. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is what we're doing is we're creating a, a recurring sales receipt, okay? Remember, Wanda says you can hear the rain. <laughs> I know, it's coming down, guys, it is coming down. Um, so uh, 
the, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so sales receipt. What you want to do is you want to create a recurring sales receipt. Okay, a sales receipt, we, we've just been talking about an expense. An expense is payment at the time of the sale. Okay, a sales receipt is also payment at the time of the sale. On the money inside, a, pay, a, a, a sales receipt, a sales receipt is money at the time of the sale and an invoice is when you uh, you do the work and then you you have they your customer has 30 days to pay okay that's an invoice on the money outside uh, we have an expense which is payment at the time of the sale and then we have the bill which has you know 30 days to pay okay so it's the same concept it's just that one is money in one is money out now what we're talking about is you charging your customers clients or in this case Craig charging his customers uh, credit cards. Um, so this is money in and it's going to be payment at the time of the sale. Um, so yeah, okay. So we're creating a new. Now remember I said there's a couple of ways to create uh, recurring ones. Well, The last exercise we did, we had the gear icon and the select recurring transactions but you can also do it actually from the transaction itself. Okay, so we're gonna click plus new and select sales receipt. Okay, in the customer field, we're selecting Gita. Okay, in the payment field, we're selecting, where'd it go? Okay, look, this is new. This is new right here, accept payments in QuickBooks. That's taking you to the QuickBooks, that, that's gonna take you to the QuickBooks payments sign up, okay? Or it's probably gonna take you to an article about it. Let's see what happens when we click it. Eh, I don't wanna click it. Let's see if I right click it. Copy, copy link to highlight. I don't know what that means. Let me go to a new, what does that go to? It just took me to another sales receipt. I don't know what the purpose of that is. But anyway, the point is it's in your company settings. That's where you sign up for it, okay? So under payment method, if I were signed up for, if I were signed up for QuickBooks payments and I selected a credit card here. So let's say I selected um, MasterCard. It would give me the opportunity to enter the MasterCard number. If this were, uh, if I select ACH, and you'll notice ACH is not in the list, so you have to actually click Add New for ACH and call it ACH. If you select that, Okay, it's ACH, it will prompt you for the bank details. And it will also give you a, um, it will also give you uh, like a form that you can have your customer, you don't have to use it, but uh, it'll give you a form you can have your customer sign to authorize that you are charging their credit card or withdrawing from their bank account every month, okay? I have, this is, let me just make this bigger so you can see, I have in the exercise a picture of what it looks like, okay? So if this were an actual company with QuickBooks payments enabled, you would have the option to enter the credit card details and process the payment directly from the sales receipt, okay? So you selected a payment method that was a credit card Either it just says credit card, or you could select like one of the one of the named credit cards, either one. And you'll see this little button that says enter credit card details. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Da, 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 credit and payment across this. You have the option to enter the credit card deals and process the payment directly from the sales receipt. So now you see this little button process credit card. So you enter the credit card details using this button and you check this. And then when it saves, 
it will save, um, it will uh, charge the credit card. And because we're setting it up as recurring, it will do that every month. This is amazing, guys. Every, you all need to be doing this. Okay, and then in your note, okay, the other thing I point out here is that there is no deposit to. Let me go back to our sales receipt. On a normal sales receipt, we have a deposit to, right? So you would either deposit to undeposited funds, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, or you would um, do it for um, uh, directly to the checking account if it's ACH or a mobile deposit, okay? But this actual, this whole deposit too will disappear when you have um, QuickBooks, when you have QuickBooks payments and you have selected a credit card or, or ACH, this whole thing will disappear because it's no, you're not defining where it's going to based on the sales receipt. You're def you define where it goes to in account and settings. So let me go back to the big version of the exercise here. Okay, so in your settings under payments, it'll say you actually set up what the account is that you want those payments to, to be deposited to. Okay, so that's how it's gonna work. You're gonna sign up for QB payments. You're going to enter your customer's credit card number and in the back end, QBO knows where to send your money. Okay, and it also know like there is a small fee. It's a small per transaction fee. It's nothing crazy, like I said, but QBO also knows that that's the fee, and so it will automatically like create like the fee portion. Okay, all right. So that is how you charge. That's how you set it up to charge your credit card recurring. I'm not going to go through the rest of the exercise because we're running late because I talk too much. But um, but this is, guys, this is how you do it. And you now have the exercise now so you can go back and you can actually work through the rest of this. Okay, let me go back to any other questions. Let's see. Um, yes, we talked about how... Uh, how you want it to be, um, how there's a small per transaction fee. Nakia says it's completely free, but it's not free. I mean, they take a certain portion of the payment received, but there's a cat, like, again, it's like very nominal and it is, it's just, oh my gosh, it's, it's so worth it, so worth it. Okay, Scott says, if you take a credit card does QuickBooks payments tokenize the CC number for security purposes? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. I can't remember, but I'm, I'm I, obviously I can't test it here, but I'm pretty sure that it does. I, I can't imagine that we, like, we'd actually be able to see the number after we save it. Okay. Uh, oh no, Amy Lynn says she doesn't have any exercise or internet. Okay, well, Amy Lynn, I'm pretty sure you're in the gym, so you can, the gym exercise that we did first, you can do that, and then the other exercise, you can come back to it because it's one of our free exercises. What number was it? 4.3. So just go to the free exercises link and scroll down to 4.3. That means it's from the basic course, section four, lesson three. Okay, all right, so let me get back to, okay, so once we have, uh, so you've done your exercise, okay, so you've done your exercise, and you have to like do the thing, you get, you click this to get the points, okay, so one of the things, that's when you do all of that inside the exercise of the week, and you have a subscription to the QBO gym, that's when it updates uh, Booksmatch. So your skills, uh, which is recurring transactions, uh, is which I think is categorized under special transactions, is um, you get the credit for, uh, for Booksmatch. You won't see it, you personally won't see it for I think it's 10 minutes maybe is when they refresh. Uh, but anyway, that's that. Then 
The other thing is uh, with the gym, and some of this was a question somebody had way early on um, about um, about promoting yourself. And I can't remember now; it's so far back in the chat. Sorry. Um, the 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 one of the things that comes with the gym is marketing prompts. Okay, so as you work through the gym, you receive you earn marketing prompts to position yourself as an expert and uh, and get QuickBooks Online cl QBO clients, okay? And so they we also give marketing prompts as part of the exercise of the week. And because you are here with us live, you also get this marketing prompt. So here is, um, here is today's marketing prompt. So uh, you learned about recurring transactions. Here's a sample post. Hey, business owner, there are some uh, there are some financial transactions in your business that are the same over and over. So why record them in QuickBooks Online over and over? I'll show you how to set it and forget it. Let's chat, okay? So that is what you can post on social media and people always ask, they always ask, all right, how do I, the most common question people ask is how do I get a client? And how do, or how do I, I mean, that's the most common is how do I get a client? Or um, how do I use the marketing prompts? Or like somebody posted in the group um, uh, earlier today, um, what, what are you using for content creation? Okay, so content, cre when people say content creation, I watched a video, by the way, yesterday. I found this, vi this video, this new guy has come up um, and who's teaching bookkeepers and his video came up like how to get clients like guaranteed. And so I, I watched his video cause I was super curious and guess what he, guess what he taught? Guess what he taught? Exactly this message that I am going to teach to you. Why am I? Okay. Sorry. This is exactly, I should have been on this all the whole, the whole time exactly the message that I'm sharing with you because it works because it works. So I, so earlier today, somebody asked in the group, in the locker room, what, uh, how, how are you coming up with content creation ideas? Well, you don't have to because I'm giving them to you every week in the exercise of the week. And in the gym, as you work through it, you earn the prompts so you know exactly what to say when you are posting on social media. But the question people always ask is how exactly do I do that? And so we have, let me see if this is gonna come up right, yep. So um, I work with a company called Bold House and they have a, uh, a marketing strategy which I thought was so brilliant that they teach and I asked permission to teach it to you guys. So. I have their permission to teach you this methodology. It is, of course, updated based on our, uh, you know, what we do as bookkeepers, but I'm gonna run through it quickly, okay? So it is called the three, two, one method, and basically here's how it goes. Three times per day, you are going to directly outreach to, or directly reach out to specific people via email, text, DM, phone call, however, it doesn't matter, but you're going to reach out to uh, three specific people. Now, this other guy I saw on, uh, on YouTube the other day, he actually said, you wanna do this 50 times a day, five, zero. That seems excessive, but you know, you can do this, what we're sharing you today is uh, a minimum. And one point that he made that I thought was really, really good is, is that the that really the key is consistency? He said if you're trying to like get strong and you go to the gym, if you're just gonna if you just go to the gym once in a while, it's you're not gonna see any results. But if you go to the gym every day or several times a week, then eventually you're gonna have results. And I thought that was a really good analogy. Okay, so three times a day, you're gonna reach out to specific. Uh, specific individuals. This is not 
sending an email blast to your whole list. You know, this is not putting up a poster in your apartment complex or at the Chamber of Commerce. This is reaching out to three individuals. Now these individuals are not, you're not selling to them. You're, you're assuming that they aren't actually your clients. What you're gonna say to them is, hey, I don't know if you know this, but I am a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Who do you know that I could connect with? Okay, so basically what you're trying to do is just expand your network, right? You want to always be expanding, 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 and you're not assuming that these people, somebody made the comment a couple weeks ago that it kind of like felt like Amway or whatever, the, they, there's a thing called the, the NFL club, no friends left. You're not selling, you're not selling to anybody. This is not soap, okay? You're trying to find the people who could potentially use your services, okay? And by the way, if you are not a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, become one, <laughs> become one. We can help you get that Pro Advisor certification in five hours. Joel's gonna put that link in the course if you want, or that link in the chat if you want to access, but like knock that off your list. It's super easy. Then you become a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. You have the status, you have the badge, you have the certificate, and now you can start saying, hey, guess what? I'm a pro uh, QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Who do you know that I could connect with, okay? So 15 times, so you will have in, in any given week, you will have reached out to 15 people, okay? And 15 people, out of those 15 people, some of them are gonna say, gosh, I don't know anybody, sorry. And some people are gonna like, oh no my gosh, I know a ton of people. Just the other day, it just it seriously happened this week, or was it last week? Cause I feel like I told this story last week. So maybe it was last week it happened. But um, the, I was talking to the receptionist at my gym and she said, oh, what do you do? And I said, oh, I teach QuickBooks Online. She said, oh my gosh, I know two people that could use you. Like, that's how easy it is, guys. <laughs> that's how easy it is. All right, so um, so you're gonna have uh, all these people that you're talking to, and the goal is for you two times per week to actually connect to a potential client. Who is a potential client? A small business owner that uses QuickBooks Online, okay? That's a potential client. Not everybody is ready for your is not everybody's gonna be ready to hire a bookkeeper and you're not trying to convince anyone to hire a bookkeeper. Trust me, when they are ready to buy, to hire a bookkeeper, like they, they will. Like they, when, if they are doing the books themselves, they are not a very successful business and that you don't wanna be working with them. You wanna be working with the, the companies that are growing and need you, okay? So, so two times per week, the goal is to connect to potential clients. These potential clients, you are not selling to. You are not saying, oh, hey, so-and-so introduced me. Do you need a bookkeeper? Or can I be your bookkeeper? No. All you're doing is you're introducing themself, yourself and you're saying, hey, I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Would love to stay connected in case you need any help. That's it. You're just declaring yourself that's who you are, okay? The, then once you have you know, met them, you just wanna connect with them on LinkedIn or whatever social media platform of your choice. The advantage of LinkedIn is that in your bio, you can put, and you should put, that you are a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, okay? When it's on your byline, that means that it shows up every time that you post anything anywhere. Okay, so we'll always say your name, QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Don't say QBO Pro Advisor, nobody knows what that means. Okay, always say QuickBooks Online. Okay, so you're gonna make sure that you have that in your byline. And then a couple of times a week, you're going to uh, post about QuickBooks Online. Okay, and this is where those marketing prompts come in. You can use them as is. Uh, you can make them pretty. Uh, it's a little bit more effective if they're kind of eye-catching. So a lot of people use Canva, put them in. Um, I know one person who um, uh, takes the prompt and, and uh, puts it in chat, chat GPT to create a, uh, a 
an article to post. Like there's so many ways. This is just a seed. Like the marketing prompts are just like to give you an idea of what to talk about. You could create a YouTube video. I mean, Hector Garcia, you guys all know Hector Garcia. Like he built this empire because he started creating YouTube videos. So like whatever you feel comfortable with, you know, but you have to like put yourself out there. One of the things that I always say is how many real estate agents do you know, right? You know who the real estate agents are because they are constantly telling you they are real estate agents. And that's all it is. In addition to your own stuff that you're gonna post, you also are gonna spend a few minutes a day liking and commenting on other people's posts, okay? Now the advantage of this is every time they see your name, what do they see? They also see Pro Advisor. They also see QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. They also, like, it's just a constant reminder of who you are. Now, when you like and comment or when you comment on other people's posts, please, please, I'm begging you, please be a normal, natural human being, okay? You are not posting, hey, do you need a bookkeeper? Oh, hey, I'm a bookkeeper in case you need anything. Hey, like, no, you're being a normal, natural human being. If somebody posts a picture of their kid playing baseball, you say, hey, great stance, good catch, you know, like, what, like whatever. You be a normal, natural human being. The whole idea of this is you want to just continue to wave your flag so people know who you are and they want you want to get people to know, like, and trust you. The only way to do that is to be a normal, natural human being. Stop being salesy. Stop like, you know, just don't be weird about it. Just like, this is my business. I'm just trying to make connections. I'm just, you know, okay. All right. So then of all of that activity, the goal, again, this is a minimum, is that one time per month at a minimum, you are doing a diagnostic review. Okay. If you don't know how to do a diagnostic review, then uh, we teach that in our cleanup course. Joel is, gonna, is going to put the link uh, for the cleanup course in the chat, but I actually don't want you to buy the cleanup course right now, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But the cleanup course teaches you how to do a diagnostic review, how to um, price your services, how to make a proposal so that, I mean, Corey closes like almost 100%. We say like nine out of 10, but 90%, but she, she's like, actually, it's like almost everybody. <laughs> so um, signs up because of the way that she uh, makes it. And so we teach you how to do that. If you're not ready for the cleanup course, if you like, there's tons of other resources, other courses, videos, like whatever, that can teach you how to do a diagnostic review or a free consultation or whatever. But here's how you're going to land it. You are simply going to say, hey, this is after you have developed kind of a relationship. You kind of know who each other people are, each other are. And you're going to say, hey, get, um, I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Would you like me to take it, your, a look at your books and see how you're doing? That's all it is. Very simple. They're going to say yes or no, or they're going to ignore you. Like, doesn't matter. Okay? The, like, the point is you're going to put yourself out there. Now, they may start coming to you. Like if you like keep posting, I mean, that's eventually the goal is for you to post as long as you are growing your network of people that, that are potential business, you know, both that could hire you and you're constantly waving your flag and you're saying, Hey, this is what I am. Of course, the goal is for them to reach out to you, but you can still on occasion, you know, reach out to them. If you haven't heard from anybody say, Hey, this is after you have developed some kind of a no like and trust relationship. If you are in our cleanup course, then you could add, hey, I just finished learning how to do a diagnostic review. Can I, can I practice on you? Would, would it be okay for me to practice? We actually did that. We actually, I had a vendor, I had somebody at my house who was looking for, a, who was looking for a bookkeeper. And I said, hey, how would you feel about opening up your books for our students to learn how to do a diagnostic review? And, um, and he said, yes. So that's in the cleanup course too, is the recording of Corey 
going in and a real vendor who was really at my house and taking a look at their books. Fortunately or unfortunately, their books were pretty good. <laughs> so, but it was an opportunity for her to like record it and show it and all that stuff. So yeah, so hey, just guys, guys, just be a normal, natural human being. Just be a normal, natural human being. Alrighty, um, I mentioned earlier that uh, if you don't have the cleanup course right now, and Joel put the put the link in there, I think. But I can't see when I'm doing that presentation. I can't actually see the chat. So, um, so yeah. So he did. Okay. But here's the thing, and you guys are the first to know this. You're the first to know. On July 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern, and we're gonna start, uh, I think on Monday, maybe the first like email at slash ad thing goes out. This is why I'm saying you're the first to hear this. On July 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern, Corey and I are doing a very special webinar. It's open to everybody, not just people in the cleanup course. And she is gonna teach us how to um, have the first conversation, that first conversation with the business owner, okay? So we talk about the three, two, one method all the time, but let's say you get a person who says, um, yes, I'd like to have a diagnostic review or I'd like to talk more, what the heck do you say? Yeah, you're brand new, your heart's beating. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, Corey's gonna teach us for free, for the world, she's gonna teach us exactly her method of having a very quick conversation and getting the information you need from the business owner to be able to do that diagnostic review. I'm so excited about it. And of course, because we're doing this special webinar, the price of the, there's gonna be a big sale on cleanup and the price of the, the, um, the price of the cleanup is going way down for a very short period of time. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but it's gonna start July 30th. <laughs> and it won't be very long after that. Okay, so just wanted you to know, very exciting. Okay, oh my gosh, guys, almost two hours. I do have a one o'clock, so let me check uh, what chats came in. Okay. Um. Kelly says, it's been a few weeks since I've been able to attend live, so I'm happy to be here today. Okay, excellent. Kelly, we're so glad to have you. All right, Tracy says, seems like a good concept in theory, but not everyone has that many people to reach out to. That is, uh, uh, respectfully, I'm gonna say that is not true. Um, the average person knows hundred, like the average person has hundreds of people in their network. Um, I heard a psychologist say that like people max out at like what they would consider close friends at 200. Um, and, um, but I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that Bold House does provide is a, um, is a uh, like a brainstorming list. And so I was gonna adapt that also <clears throat> so that you guys can um, start thinking about like who you know. I mean, you all know, you all know people. And, um, and if you haven't reached out in a, a long time, then reach out and reconnect. And, um, and uh, yeah, they're gonna let them, you're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna say, hey, I haven't talked to you forever. What are you doing? And you're gonna say, oh, Funny you should ask. I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. <laughs> anyway, so we will, um, yeah, so Jesse's saying the same thing. You'd be surprised how many people have in your network. I was challenged to do this in another group and just going through your contact list and your phone, Facebook groups, etc., is many more than I realized. That is great, Jesse. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. That's great. Just go through the people on your phone and your Facebook groups. Who are you connected to? That's, I'll, be, I'll add those to the list. That's great. Um, yeah, to the, they, Bold House gave me a list and I was gonna adapt it. Okay, let's see. Um, okay. 
Tracy says, this is the same Tracy, I've reached out to everyone I know and absolutely nothing came of it. Okay, well then you need to start meeting new people. <laughs> it's time to, time to start networking, baby. All right, let's see. What Jesse says is what's important is that you planted the seed, eventually it will come back. Again, yes, like that's really what you want to do. You're, re remember too, Tracy, is that you are not, when you're reaching out to these people, you are not trying to get them to hire you. Okay, so, and that's a really, really important part of the process is you are not reaching out to everyone going through your phone. Do you need a bookkeeper? Do you need a bookkeeper? Do you need a bookkeeper? That's not what this is. It is asking people, who do you know that runs a small business that, own, that uses QuickBooks Online? That's all, that's, that's what you're doing. You're asking them to connect to their network. You're not asking like for their business. So, uh, and yes, Jesse, this is what pretty much what I was saying. Eventually it will come back when one of those people come across someone that says they need a bookkeeper, you will hopefully come to mind and you will come to mind if you are constantly, um, put, you know, putting out those marketing prompts. If you're constantly saying, hey, I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, here's a tip. Here's a, you know, whatever. Oh, I just learned this. Or, oh, I watched this great YouTube video and, okay. Um, and then uh, also joining local networking and small business groups helps a lot too. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, Darla says, perfect timing. I was hoping to figure out a strategy for marketing in my daily schedule. That's exactly it. Let's see. Darla says, do you, do you do this as your personal profile as your, or as your business page on Facebook? Uh, personal is always better, but I prefer, I prefer LinkedIn because that's where, that's where like the businesses are, but, um, you can, um, the point is that people need to know, like, and trust you. And, um, and, and so the more that you can be a normal, natural human being and interact with people to get, um, uh, you know, to, to just so for them to become familiar with who you are, like that's really, that's really the key. So, um, yeah, so I would, I would do personal pay, I would do personal, but you know, make sure this is the other thing I mentioned in LinkedIn is that your byline says, make sure that your byline says that you're a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor and like how to get your page says, how to get a hold of you. Uh, one time, pretty recently, I was looking, f I, I had a lead that I was looking to give somebody um, and I was looking for a particular niche. And I found, I, so I posted in a group and I said, does anyone have this particular niche of bookkeeping? I need to turn, I'm looking, you know, for somebody to help this lead. And I had like 10 people respond, oh yeah, I'm in that niche, I'm in that niche, I'm in that niche. And I went to um, the, I went to all of their personal pages and not one of them, not one single one of these people that said, oh yeah, I'm in that niche, I'm in that niche, not one of them had any contact information, any uh, like a link to their web page or anything that I could verify like who they are or that they're even a bookkeeper. So if you're going the Facebook route, make sure you have all of that. Okay, I got three minutes because I have a one o'clock. I think it's a one o'clock. Hold on, let me just check my calendar real quick. Oh, it's not till 1.30, okay. That's good, I can get some lunch. Okay, all right, let's see. Um, okay, Rosalba says the same thing. I'm. It's the same, my same advice, is that you're, you have to like keep, you have to keep doing it, put your, grow your, grow your network. Also, I wanna say guys, I'm not a marketing, I, I don't teach marketing. Like this is the only method that I teach because I know that I know that it will work for you. I know that as you are putting in the effort of actually doing the work and growing your network, 
growing your network, growing your network. Who do you know? Who do you know? Are some of you guys old enough to remember that shampoo commercial? What was that shampoo commercial? Like, and they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and like all the pictures show up on the commercial. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, yeah, so like that's what you have to, you have to be doing it. That is, by the way, what being a business owner is. If you want to be a business owner, if you want to be a freelancer, you have to put yourself out there to find, uh, to find customers. If you don't want to do that, then it would be better for you to work for somebody else and get a, get a job. And that's why in Booksmatch, we have the opportunity for you to do both. Like we have recruiters that are looking to fill positions in companies. And then uh, we also have um, firms who are looking for, to fill bookkeeping slots, either freelance or as employees. Um, so because some people, they would prefer that they would prefer to make less money if somebody else were to go out there and um, kill their dinner. So, I mean, some people wanna go fishing and some people wanna just go to the grocery store and buy the fish, right? <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, Chris says, the webinar with you, Corn Corey, sounds terrific, yay. Yes, we're super excited about it, okay. Um, yes, uh, Tashisa, I am still doing Mindset Mondays on Facebook. And um, yeah, it happens every Monday. It is um, at my whim. So Mondays are always a little crazy for me. So I hop on as soon as I can and just kind of share a quick message. But they are already, um, uh, they are already, um, I forgot what I was saying, sorry. Uh, they're in the events. So if you, I think they're in the events, even if I do just a regular Facebook Live from my phone. Anyway, so yes, so Mindset Mondays are out there. Um, okay, alrighty, well that's it. And I am, Sorry that I kept you so late. For those of you guys who are new, I used to always try and keep this as uh, at an hour. I never ever succeed at doing an hour. So I, <laughs> so I have resigned myself to it being an hour and a half. And here we are, two hours, <laughs> two hours into it. Anyway. You guys have a fabulous Friday. I hope that your weather is better than mine because it's still raining out there and I think it's going to for the whole next next day. I'm excited to go back to actual summer and jump in my pool. And, um, oh, Mark says uh, that this was his first time. Yay, so glad to have you, Mark, woohoo. Alrighty, and I will, uh, I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to hear your success story.